All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is Chuck, and this is the the second video on subnetting. Uh, the first video, if you missed it, was was basically just going over uh, classes and and the default subnets for the classes. But on this one, we're going to get into binary to decimal and decimal to binary conversions, uh, which is something that you have to know if you want to subnet your network. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this thing. So first off, we're going to convert from binary to decimal. Now, I always do it this way. It doesn't matter if I'm just doing small conversions or long conversions. I always write it out this way, especially for certification tests. Write a number line along the top of your paper. Start with 1 and keep doubling the number until you get to 128. If you guys have seen the first video, remember when I explained that IP addresses are, are um, 32 bits in length, broken up into four octets of eight bits each? Well, if you take a look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's our eight bits. You're going to need that when you convert from binary to decimal. So you start with one and you keep doubling till you get to 128. Now, when you get a binary number, binary are just going to be zeros and ones. You'll never see a two. You'll never see a three. You'll never see a negative one. Just zeros and ones. So let's say we have this number. One, zero, one, zero, 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 one. That's the binary number. Well, for whatever reason, we don't need binary. We need the decimal equivalent. How do we figure it out? Well, just look at the number above it. Wherever there's ones, ignore the zeros and add up those numbers. So what we're going to have is 128 plus 32 plus 1. That's going to give us 161. So in binary, 10100001 is the same as 161 in decimal. Let's take a look at this one. Again, once you get used to it, you can do it without the number line, but it's so much easier to plot your number line. Again, just add up where all the ones are. 64, 32, 8, and 1. Add those up, we end up with 105. That, it's that simple. Decimal to binary is very, very simple. Now, I also mentioned in the first video that these numbers can never go greater than 255. Well, why is that? Well, if you take a look at these numbers at the top, if you add up 128 and 64 and 32 and 16 and 8 and 4 and 2 and 1, if you add those up, they equal 255. That means everything under here are ones. Everything is turned on. 255 is your biggest number in any octet. Okay, one more. Take a look at this one. Again, just look where the ones are. Ignore the zeros. 32, 16, 8, 4, and 2. It's going to give us 62 to the exact same number. This becomes crucial when we start subnetting because you are going to have to take your subnet mask and change it to binary and then we start modifying the bits. Okay. So let's flip it. Let's go the other way. They didn't give us a binary number, they gave us a decimal number, and we have to turn that to binary. Well, you still start the same way, the same line. And you ask yourself this question, can you subtract this number, 147, from the number to the far left? If you can, and not go into the negatives, you put a 1 underneath of it. Well, can I take 128 from 147? Well, yes, I can. So I put a 1 there. 
Now, I just subtract 128 from 147, which is going to leave me 19. Then I go to the next number, 64. Well, can I take 64 from 19? No, not without going into the negatives, so I put a 0. How about 32? No, nope, can't take 32 from 19, put a 0. Well, what about 16? Well, sure I can. I can take 16 from 19, so I put a 1 there, subtract 16 from 19, I end up with 3. Well, I can't take 8 from 3, so that's a 0. Can't take 4 from 3, but I can take 2 from 3. Subtract 2 from it, I end up with 1. I can take 1 from it, and I end up with 0. So 147 in decimal is the same as 1001011. Zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. Again, this, this line here is crucial when it comes to helping you out in doing this. Okay, so let's take a look at 208. Well, yep, I can take 128 from 208. That still leaves me with 80. Can I take 64 from it? Sure I can. Leaves me with 16. Well, I can't take 32 from it, but I can take 16 from it, which leaves me with 0, which means all these other ones must be 0. And that is my binary answer. Okay, last one, 199. Well, I can take 128 from it. That leaves me 71. I can take 64 from it, that leaves me 7. I can't take 32, or 16, or even 8. But I can take 4, that'll leave me 3. I can take 2, that'll leave me with 1, and I can take 1, that'll leave me with 0. So my answer here, 11000111. One, one, zero, 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 one, one, one. And that's how simple it is. Binary to decimal and decimal to binary. It's done constantly. It needs to be done fast, but it's done constantly when you're subnetting. So now that we know our classes, we know our default subnet mask, and we know how to convert from decimal to binary and binary to decimal, now we can start subnetting. So the next video I'm going to post is they're going to give us a particular number of subnets. They're going to give us an address scheme particular number of subnets and we have to figure out how to change the subnet mask to allow for those many subnets. So I look forward to seeing you in the third video.